So, a very good afternoon to all of you. In the previous lectures of DC to DC converters, I had explained how a DC to DC buck converter functions, how it works. Okay. So, needless to say that it is a very important converter. Okay. It is having wide impact on our lives. Okay, it is used in the energy storage elements. Okay, it is also used in the extracting energy from the DC grid. It can be used. It can be used. I am again saying that it, is, it can be used because it is the basic building block. I will not say that it is used. Because I had myself researched in this area, I can bluntly say that yes, it can be used. Now, have a look at this. This thing. This is the power circuit diagram of a buck converter. Okay. Two type of buck converters are shown here. First one is the isolated type. Second one is the non isolated type. Why I am showing this? Because you can easily observe in the isolated type a transformer is present there. You can observe that a transformer is present there, and that transformer is basically which separates the diode circuit that is D2, L, and capacitor load from the switch and thus DC supply. So we should very well understand we should very well understand that this thing this DC now many of the students will say that sir how you are applying a DC to this transformer that is a big big question yes we can definitely apply DC to a transformer but the only case is that we will not let the transformer get saturated. Okay? We will work in the linear reason. Because if the transformer gets saturated, then from the BH curve, we can very well know that even for a very small increment in magnetic flux, a large amount of current will be drawn if we are operating the transformer in saturation if we want to increase the flux by a very small value okay that is phi and i you are getting it phi or i yes that is the phi is here flux i is here or phi is nothing but b into a that is b and i i is nothing but it will correspond to mf n into i that is f and i is proportional to h the magnetic field in density that is why it is termed as the bh curve bh curve or the phi i curve so if the transformer is operating in the saturation region then we can very well say that a very small increase in a very very small increase in flux will take place but for that small increase the increment in the current will be very high so the magnetizing current that will be drawn will be very high it will be of very high magnitude and that will lead to increased losses increased core losses if the current is increased then obviously the hysteresis loss will increase for sure the core losses will increase due to the current obviously the copper losses will also will also increase so that's why we cannot operate the transformer in saturation okay or what we say that okay fine we cannot operate that transformer so we can supply this thing we can okay now flux magnetic flux is nothing but b equals to phi into a that is phi has to be variable in nature but phi has to increase okay clear so 
when the DC current is flowing through the switch, what will happen? The switching frequency of the switch will be very high. Have a look at this. I will scroll it up and I will come back to this part. This switch. This will on, the current will flow and immediately it will get turned off. So the flux cannot reach its saturation region. It will not get saturated. Okay? And thus this transformer can still work because the flux has not reached its saturation level. So we can operate a transformer in DC in this converter. Okay. Second thing is that this diode D1 this will make sure that this AC voltage that is applied here will be of positive polarity. Yes. This will remain of positive polarity. Okay. Now our purpose is solved because it will act as a it will act as a uncontrolled rectifier. I think I am quite clear. So that is the uncontrolled rectifier. Okay. Needless to say that when the current is when the circuit is closed, have a look at this. When the circuit is closed, then obviously this point is positive and this is also positive. So our voltage will get applied, diode will conduct and the voltage gets applied across the load. When the switch is off, obviously this there will be no current, no voltage is induced across these windings, no voltage is there and no current will flow. I think this is quite clear. No need to emphasize more on this. It's quite clear and easy to understand. Now, now I would like to share one more thing. Now this is the isolated type. Obviously isolation has its own benefits like uh, any damage which occurs in this part of the circuit for example consider this part if any damage happens in this part it won't be reflected in the DC okay or suppose if the switch or the driver circuit of the switch is damaged then that doesn't get replicated on the this part I think I'm quite clear till this part I'm quite clear so now Whereas if you are looking at a non-isolated type, it is very easy, very easy to look and understand. It consists of a DC voltage connected via switch, diode inductor, capacitor is there, the circuit that I was talking about in the hour, entire duration, okay. And then we will use this circuit, we can use this circuit for our discussion. This circuit will be used for our discussion, our derivations that I will continue in the next lecture because in this lecture my aim was to let you clearly understand the power circuit. Okay, I can start with the derivations. We can. I had already told told you. Just have a look at this. If this switch is closed, then the voltage at this junction of this point is EDC, and the voltage at this terminal, this terminal is V naught. V0 here it is VDC so VL will be VDC minus V0 okay when this switch is off obviously this circuit is not connected so we are only left with this circuit I will put this this is the circuit that we are left with we will perform the analysis on this part by simply performing the analysis on this part we can say that the output at the voltage at VL will be nothing but minus V0. As I had already discussed that ampere current law will hold in this lecture, ampere current law will hold. So when we, no sorry, 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 I, I beg my pardon because as the, in for inductor, the volt second balance will hold because the current through the inductor is periodic. As the current is periodic, so the volt second balance will definitely hold. And as it will hold, then we can straight away say that voltage into T on, V on, V L into T on plus V L into T off should be zero. Okay, so we will put the respective values of T on and T off, we will equate it to zero and we will get the desired ratio. Okay, similarly we can do the same thing for the capacitor. We will do one thing that we will keep. I will write the ampere balance law for capacitor and from that I can show that capacitor current is nothing but equals to I naught. 
for okay thank you for bearing with me i will see you in the next lecture